Hello and welcome back to the Herefordshire Gardener channel. My name's Aaron and today I'm going to be showing you all, hopefully, some results from my Crown Princess Margarita rose cuttings. If you're interested in Crown Princess Margarita, please check out my earlier videos where you'll find a review on this amazing rose. Just for your information, the cuttings in this video were actually taken two weeks earlier than the cuttings in my how to do a rose cutting crown princess margarita rose review video on this channel so here's the cuttings that i took approximately seven and a half weeks ago on the 17th of june this year um, in this video i'm hopefully going to tip these out of this pot and see some roots i'm going to show you how i pot those up what medium i put them in and how i take care of them until they're ready to go out in the garden you go back to some of my previous videos you'll see the setup that I use to develop these cuttings from the moment that they're stuck in the soil and um, this pot hasn't been watered since I originally stuck them into here and they've just been in a large plastic container um, since so seven and a half weeks in there out of direct sunlight um, periodically lifting the lid every couple of days just to vent the box but other than that I've left them. I only took um, I three cuttings in this particular pot when I stuck these cuttings in the middle of June. Um, as you can see, all three of them have remained green and healthy. There's no black um, on any of those, which is good. And I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but you can see just in here, we've got a bud eye that's opening and starting to sprout. Um, we've got a similar thing going on on this one and a similar thing going on on that third one and that's quite a good telling sign um, when you're doing rose cuttings i like them to remain in this sort of dormant state until they've managed to put down some roots to support this new growth um, so often when you stick rose cuttings in and you'll see like a new stem popping up and you think brilliant i've got a successful rose cutting only to watch it die and wither away in the following weeks if that's you you'll understand exactly the frustration um, that that brings so i'm more encouraged when i see that they've not shot out and i think well if they're still green they must have been doing something else and hopefully making roots now if i turn this pot over you can see already at the bottom look at those roots so they're coming out of pretty much every hole in the bottom of that pot um, which is great and considering this is quite a deep pot i'm hoping that we've got quite a fair few roots um, in these pots that's a really encouraging sign it's nice when you see roots coming out the bottom because you know almost with certainty that it's a success i'm confident that at least one of these has rooted i'm hopeful that all three are of looking at them what I'm going to do in a moment, I'm going to take them out of the pot. We're going to have a look at the roots. I'm going to try not to disturb them too much. I'm going to pot them on and show you how I do that. So here we have um, the mixture of soil that I'm going to be using to put into the pot. So I'm just using my old David Austin rose pots. They come in handy for cutting. So they're perfect size, perfect depth. Um, so I like to recycle them and reuse them. Um, here we've got a mixture of my clay soil from the garden which is really, really good soil, perfect for roses, um, retains the water really well. Roses seem to thrive in this type of soil. And what I've done is I've mixed this to about a 60% garden soil, 40% multipurpose compost. If you look here, that's my normal garden soil. You can see it's kind of cocoa coloured um, clay soil. And as you can see, when it's mixed with the compost, they just blend in quite nicely together and this will form a really nice mixture that I can pot these roses up in and um, leave them in this pot probably for the next year at least to allow them to establish a good root base and that should have them ready then for me to plant out into the garden. So as you can see here I've just filled to about a third of the way the pot with the mixture from the wheelbarrow that I mentioned just a moment ago. Um, into that mixture I've just added a very small helping of these multi-purpose uh, rose food. Um, not too much in here, just, just a small sprinkling and then mixed it in with my hand 
I've done the other two pots there as well, so we're all ready and set to go. The final step will be to put some of this um, mycorrhizal fungi um, for roses. So if you're not familiar with mycorrhizal fungi, um, they essentially form a symbiotic relationship with the plant at its roots. Um, so they often grow around the roots or in some cases, depending on the type of mycorrhizal fungi, they grow into the roots themselves. It's not parasitic. It forms a mutualistic relationship with the plant. So the fungus gets nutrients from the plants. So the plant makes food in its leaves, sends it down to the roots and the fungi benefit from right, that. They send out these small structures, string-like structures, a bit like this, I guess. Um, this is not fungus, this is roots. But they, to just give you an idea, this is typically the sort of shape that they are and they spread out far and wide. And they're very, very small, much smaller than this in fact. Um, let's see if that can come into focus. And they extend the plant's reach in terms of its roots. So you're essentially so creating a secondary root system on the plant. And all that's gonna do is just ensure the plant has much more vigor, health, strength, and overall will perform much better than say a plant without the mycorrhizal fungi. So I do use this when I'm replanting roses in pots in the ground. In terms uh, of how to apply this to your plants in pots, all I've done here is I've just put a small layer of it on top of the soil uh, in the pot that I filled to a third of the level full. There's no point in mixing this in with your soil. Um, it needs to come into contact with the um, plant roots to form that relationship. So here we are, this is the moment of truth. This is what we've all been waiting for. I'm gonna take out my tag. So that's Crown Princess Margarita, 17th of June. I'll just pop that there where I can see it. Um, I'm gonna come back once I've emptied this pot just so that I've got two hands spare. Okay, so I've tipped the pot out. And as you can see, look at those roots, guys. That is amazing. That is so good to see. Look at that, that is so cool. I love it when it all comes together. You can see they're going all the way around. There's tons of roots on that side. And if we come around here, you can see that stem seems to have roots, I'm assuming. Um, that stem there seems to have roots as does this one. So I think we've got roots on all three cuttings, which is amazing. So I'm gonna just try and gently tease these apart and then we'll have a look at what we've got. So we've got two of the cuttings just on that side and I've got one of them just here. Look at the roots on that guys. That's just seven and a half weeks of roots. Normally I'd leave these for a full 10 weeks. So I think this would be even more. Um, just so many roots on that, it's amazing to see. It's still a baby. It still needs to fill out this particular pot with roots. But for seven and a half weeks, look how healthy they look. That is really, really encouraging. So exciting. Brand new Crown Princess Margarita starting out and this is gonna be an own root rose. So it'll be interesting to see how she performs on her own roots versus the grafted one that we've got in the garden. So I don't know if you can see, but what I've tried to do, I pop the cutting in the pot, the new pot that it's gonna grow on in, and I've tried to stick some of the mycorrhizal fungi um, around the root zone, just to enable that relationship to form. Um, in terms of pot in depth, I don't know if you can see, but from here, you can see a slight color change in the stem. That's where the stem was buried to in my original cutting. Um, so I'm going to backfill to that level, which will bring it up to about the lip of the pot. I don't want to plant this any deeper. I just want to plant it to that level. Um, so I'll come back and show you what that looks like. So that's the rose now tucked up nicely uh, in the new pot. Um, just a little side note, I like to use my garden soil. Um, we've got re we're very lucky here, in fact, that we've got um, really gorgeous uh, medium clay soil which helps to retain the moisture a bit better, um, which roses really like. It also drains quite well, which is good. Um, but the thing that I, the reason why I like to use my garden soil, um, as well as a multi-purpose compost mix, is I find that the soil life, that is the microbes that already exist in there, 
I just find it's a better environment for my rose cuttings. It's a more natural environment and what Mother Nature intended. Um, you know, your multi-purpose compost will have microbes in there, but I think I feel, my personal experience, that blending the garden soil and this good quality soil with my multi-purpose compost really does make a difference in terms of the overall health of the cutting and how quick it settles in. So I'm going to pop the original label that I had the cuttings in in this pot. I'm going to do another two labels just like that with the same date and pop them in the other pots. I'm going to get them two potted up now. We'll have a look at those roots in a second and then I'll get back to a stage where I've got three potted up and then we'll give them a good water, pop them somewhere um, where they'll receive plenty of light. This is the second one. I split that patch that was down there and you can see just look at all them roots so many you can actually see the stem in this one i'm not going to knock too much soil off because i don't want to disturb these um if i snap these at the stem that's going to set it back but just look how healthy they are i just love seeing progress like this it's so satisfying to think you can cut a stem from a plant stick it in the soil in the right conditions and it just breathes new life just wants to live and this should hopefully in years to come you know grow into a large gorgeous crown princess margarita shrub that's really exciting if you're like me you'll understand exactly why it's exciting it looks like we've got another bud there just below soil level starting to burst is good because that means we're going to go out have one up the top and one up down the bottom so that's nice more stems more stems means more flowers means happier erin anyway i'm going to delicately pop this one into the pot and finally this is the last cutting to go into the pot so you can see there it's got its own roots which is absolutely fabulous i'm going to pop this one up now just have a look at those roots. See, the top soil is loose because most of the roots are coming actually from the bottom of the cutting. Just look at those, that's amazing. Absolutely amazing. It's got a little bit of the um, soil from the barrow stuck, but originally it was just the multi um, purpose compost that was in this pot. Really, really well drained out before I stuck them in, and I think that's the key to reducing rot. Um, rot the black stems I'm um, referring to um, you know when if you've done cuttings before you will definitely have seen black stems everybody experiences it inevitably some of your cuttings will go that way but I find to reduce the chances of that occurring just make sure that your medium um, I use multi-purpose compost is absolutely thoroughly ringed out of water um, before you stick your cuttings and I'll often you know put my compost wet it put an extra pot on top push that pot down on this one i'll push my fist into it just to wring it out you could use two boards um, pop your wetened compost between the boards and then stand on the top board to try and encourage the water to drain you just want it damp to the touch but not wet and that's all they need and that'll just mean that it's not wet enough to rot your cuttings um, and encourage the roots to come out into that moist environment where they'll start taking advantage of the water that's available. So it's important just remember when you are putting on new cuttings or a new plant for example that you've just bought into the ground or into a pot we need to minimize um, the air spaces between the new medium and the roots. We don't want to compact the mixture but we need good contact we don't want large air pockets inside here because the roots inevitably will not grow out into um, the air pocket they need the medium um, in which to grow in so i just tap the pot and just make sure that all that compost in there finds its own level and fills in any small space and i just give the rows just a little gentle tuck in and that's all nothing more than that and then like I did with the other roses, I'm just going to pop a new label in there because for all intent and purposes, I won't have a clue 
in months to come which rose this was if I didn't label it up. So to save myself the hassle of having to wait for her to grow and bloom for me to find out. And even then, as you know, with a lot of David Austin roses, a lot of them look so similar. So I'm just taking the guesswork right out of it. I know what I'm starting with. I know what I'll end up with later. So I always make a priority, a good housekeeping, make sure that you are um, labeling everything that you're doing. Um, because even with the best memory, you know, you, you're gonna forget inevitably. Um, and if you've got memory like me, you'll probably forget in the next five minutes. So this is it, that's the final step done. They've been watered and I've just gently watered them from the top till the point at which I've seen the water draining out of the bottom. So I know that the medium is thoroughly wet. And if I'm being honest now, given the clay mixture that's in here, these very rarely need watering. It's really good at retaining the moisture, but allowing the drainage and just the addition of that multipurpose compost also aids in that process. Unless we get some really hot weather, I'll just keep an eye on them. And you can often tell when a plant needs rewatering if it's in a small pot just by the weight of it. Um, but you know, other clues include things like your leaves wilting or your blooms sort of looking a bit shriveled up. Obviously we don't have any blooms on these roses yet, but on that point, I took similar cuttings, um, I believe about a month before these ones. So around about mid-May, um, I had a few stems that had blown off in some heavy winds off of one of the roses in my garden. Um, and I decided to stick them and there was only two stems. I used the same method as what I've used with these and those are the results. These two roses at the back here. Um, I've got some other roses that I've bought at the back. I've got Port Sunlight over there. I'll come back to these two roses in a second. Um, I believe we have um, Vanessa Bell at the back that's just gone over on her blooms. They need deadheading. An amazing rose. I'm going to do some reviews on these roses in due course, but yeah, they're just kind of waiting to go out into the rose room. I've got the spaces for them. I'm just busy building the pergola structure at the moment, um, so all will be revealed. Um, we've also got here the shepherdess, another amazing rose, and then I think this one is wild eve. So I'm really excited to get those in and get them tidied up and get them on the way. They're already putting out tons of growth though, just in their pots in this position. Um, so looking very healthy, I'm just keeping them watered. Um, so coming back to these um, two roses that I did a bit earlier. So these guys, these were, these were taken in May this year. And we've got blooms on them already. One, two, three, four on this one and four blooms on the other one. And they started like this about six, six and a half, seven weeks after I originally did the cuttings. And you can see, hopefully, by late September, we should have something that looks like this before we start going into the dormant season in October, November. Um, but these, I'm gonna see if I can pick this up. This is quite heavy because it's got clay soil in, um, but the roots already on this, I, I know this because I've checked already, but the roots, I'm going to try and tip this over to show you. Look at the stems on that already. We've got another stem from down there, which is great because it's going to give us that vase shape. But look at those stems. Um, you can just about see new roots poking out the bottom there. Not so many on this particular one, but that's encouraging to know that the roots are growing down through that clay medium already. Um, I'm hopeful that there's progression of roots in this pot. Um, I'm going to have a look at the other one now. So this is the second one. I could sacrifice those blooms and remove them so that the plant focuses its energy on growing more roots, but I don't know. This is all just one big experiment, isn't it? And I'd quite like to just see how they perform um, this year. So if we have a look, this is just my old Lady of Shalott pot. This is not Lady of Shalott. Um, if you have a look down here, um, let me just move that. Look at that root coming out the corner there, that's huge. 
absolutely massive so I'm very confident these these ones are doing what I intend them to do and they're just putting on tons of growth if you found this video interesting useful you'd like to be notified um, when I upload more content just give the video a like and subscribe to the channel and um, join us on the next video whatever that may be take care thanks for watching